Hello, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on Common Laptop Components. Today we're going to be discussing components that are found inside the case, and then we'll discuss components that are found outside of the case. And with that, let's go ahead and begin this session. And we'll begin by talking about common components found inside the laptop's case. As laptops are designed to be portable, they are smaller and lighter than most desktop systems. This has led to some basic differences in the components of the laptop. Many of the components found in the laptop are proprietary to the manufacturer of that laptop. Also, while many laptops can be upgraded, it can be more difficult and expensive to perform those upgrades. So now let's move to the inside of the case, and we're going to start with the motherboard. Each motherboard is designed specifically for the laptop in which it fits. They are non-upgradable beyond BIOS upgrades. That means if you burn up the motherboard and you want to replace it, you have to replace it with the exact same motherboard. Also, there is no standard form factor for the laptop motherboard. Now let's talk about laptop CPUs. Because of the nature of the motherboard, the CPU is not really upgradable either. Some modern laptops actually come with the CPU soldered in place on the motherboard. Also, it is more common to have integrated graphics in the laptop CPU than it is on the desktop CPU. Laptop CPUs are designed to consume less power. This increases the amount of time that the laptop can run on a battery. It also reduces heat output, which means they don't require as powerful of fans as the desktop CPU. As a downside, most laptop CPUs cannot handle the same workloads as a desktop CPU. They're just not meant to handle that kind of workload. Now let's talk about hard disk drives. The laptop computer has a smaller form factor than is commonly found in the desktop. The standard size of a laptop hard drive is two and a half inches versus the three and a half inch disk drive that's found in the desktop. A two and a half inch disk drive has a smaller overall capacity than a three and a half inch hard drive. Currently, it's not uncommon for laptops to come with solid state drives in instead of the traditional spinning platter hard disk drive. That can increase performance but it can also lead to a reduction in storage capacity and add more cost to the laptop. The type of random access memory that the laptop uses is also different from the desktop. Laptops use small outline dual inline memory modules, SODIMs. Now SODIMs do come in all of the current standards of full size random access memory. The RAM in a laptop may be easily upgradable or it may be soldered in place and cannot be replaced. Most laptops also come with built-in wireless networking capability. In most cases, this is achieved by using a wireless card that uses either a mini PCI or mini PCIe interface on the motherboard. The antenna for the wireless is commonly located in the hinged cover next to the screen. Now let's move on to batteries. Surprise, all laptops come with batteries that supply DC current to the system. They are specifically designed for the laptop. Many are easily replaceable. They're easy to remove and can be updated with batteries that meet the manufacturer's specification. But some are not field replaceable. They're proprietary to the manufacturer and or they're soldered in place. All laptops use a special power cord. The cord receives the AC wall current and converts it to the appropriate DC current required by the laptop's battery. And not only do they supply that DC current to the laptop battery, but they do so in the wattage requirements that the battery needs. The power cord delivers the DC current to a DC jack located on the outside of the laptop. Because of the constant plugging in and unplugging of the cord, it's not uncommon for the DC jack to become loose inside the laptop. Now on the positive side, it can usually be reattached, so not a big deal. Lithium ion is currently the most common type of battery, 
for the laptop. Now let's move on to common components outside the case. So they may not really be outside of the case, but they're not inside of the case either. And we're going to start with the screens. Laptops have built-in screens that are located in the hinged cover. I bet you you're surprised at that. Commonly, it's an LCD or LED type screen. Less commonly, it could be an OLED or a plasma type screen. Laptops come with keyboards. In most cases, the laptop keyboard is smaller and more compact than the desktop keyboard. To make up for this and to add additional capabilities, most laptops have a special function key. The function key will change the results of a key depression on certain keys. The alternate function that is performed is often colored in blue on the key. Laptops also come with a touchpad or trackpad. These are located below the keyboard and above the palm rest. It is used to move the cursor and to perform other operations. They're designed to sense finger movement, and you may find that you need to adjust the sensitivity on the touchpad to suit your needs. And that is usually adjusted by a software setting on the laptop. Some laptops come with a pointing device that is specifically designed to move the cursor. Usually it looks like an eraser head and you'll find it embedded in the keyboard. Laptops come with speakers that are integrated into the system and they are non-upgradable. Now let's move on to optical drives. Many laptops come with modular optical drives built into them. In some cases, the optical drive bay may be a multi-function drive bay, allowing some optional components to be used in the bay in place of the optical drive. I had a laptop for a while where I could pop out the disk drive and I could insert a special battery to extend the battery life of my system. Now as the size and weight of laptops decrease, it is becoming harder and harder to find a laptop with an optical drive. Now that concludes this session on common laptop components. We talked about components inside the case and then we talked about components outside of the case. Now on behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session and I'm looking forward to doing another one.